Hi, today we're going to talk about the role of a time series historian databases in Industry 4.0. My name is Argin Tukanai. I'm the partner and head of industry here at Nortel. My backgrounds come from industrial automation and industrial IT. I have a formal education on uh, industrial automation systems, but been working with IT more or less my whole career, almost like soon 20 years. So I would say I've seen it all being the, uh, on, the, on the shop floor, PLC programming, SCADA programming, MES systems, MES architectures, ERP integrations, whatnot. Nowadays I work mostly on, on, on hybrid cloud technologies on Microsoft uh, Azure platform, uh, working with one of the lar largest customers in, in the industry in uh, metals, forests, and many other industries. So today's agenda is shortly about how, how time series databases fit in Industry 4.0. Uh, first, we, will, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, general trends and challenges. Uh, after that, I'm going to shortly introduce how time series historian is typically used in digital manufacturing platforms, how we see at Nortel the future, uh, how we approach modern digital ecosystem development. Then I have two case examples where we have uh, leveraged InfluxDB as the cornerstone of the of, of industrial solution. And then I'm still having a couple of words about why we have chosen InfluxDB to be our chosen uh, platform or, or database for, for these solutions. Okay, let's get rolling. So first couple of words uh, about the company Norco. We are fairly decent, uh, decently sized uh, experienced company uh, uh, founded in already in 1985 in Finland called CCC through acquisitions, mergers. Uh, nowadays, the company is called Nortel. Uh, we are approximately 850 specialists uh, working globally in uh, more than 10 countries nowadays. And like I said, we've been in this business for quite some time already. Uh, what we do here at Nortel, uh, we do basically a lot of digital services, digital solutions in healthcare, in government, uh, in, in, in industry, uh, and in commer commerce section. But today we are talking more or less about industry solutions. Uh, we are a software artisans, I would say. Uh, we work with uh, many platforms. Uh, in cloud environment, hybrid cloud environment, we are working all, with all major public cloud providers, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. So shortly about trends and challenges. So what we see in general in industry, uh, when we go to any type of an industrial client, uh, we see always these same trends, uh, the trends and challenges that the customers are seeing. Uh, the first is obviously the merging of physical and digital worlds. Uh, whenever clients are either buying new equipment or renewing or, or modernizing equipment, they always have the same interest. They want to have their physical assets connected to their digital world, digital platforms, databases, analytics and such. So this is, this is obviously one of the, one of the trends and, and that have, we have been seeing for already quite some, some time. Uh, but when we go to the industrial setting, the challenge is the silo data. Some of the machinery and equipment are more or less decades old. They are really old legacy technology. You quite often encounter a piece of equipment that even don't have uh, network connectivity, Ethernet. They have some proprietary uh, field bus uh, connections and so on. So first and foremost, we always need to solve the silo data, doing the data connections, data integrations, in order to actually start the kind of like the digital journey. Uh, another very kind of like popular trend or, 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 or how to say, uh, preference uh, the clients have is that during the last years, also, the industrial clients have started to understand that the world is moving away from, from these kind of like, like bloated monolith on-premise huge applications, typically an ERP or a manufacturing execution system purchased, installed on-premises, 
heavily customized and basically the applications get 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 broken because they're customized too much more or less uh, we have seen already not only in the erp world but also the manufacturing and industrial it world the applications get more like smaller lightweight modular uh, integratable providing better apis better connectivity so that the basically the solution can be built using uh, an API ecosystem driven approach. Uh, then this is very typical in the large industrial appliances that uh, many of them have have workforce who are on the kind of a, uh, beginning to get a little bit old there uh, on, on, on the kind of a retirement age. Uh, they have a lot of this silent knowledge. I call them machine whispers. So basically they've been working with the factory with machinery with production lines already decades. They have this kind of like sixth sense, sixth sense that they know if the machine has some like abnormal sound, vibration, whatnot. So they can basically kind of like have this almost like an AI level of intelligence when the machines are going to break or when the process is unhealthy. And when these guys retire, uh, it's very important that the silent knowledge of these machine whispers is captured in IT systems, in analytical models, in order uh, for the processes to keep going. So, a uh, couple of words, not specifically, how to say, targeted to industrial uh, clients on, and settings only, but a couple of words how we at Nortel are seeing the digital development, digital platform, digital ecosystems. So. Our approach always is like that we prefer uh, product-friendly uh, solutions. So basically, it's needless to say, there are a lot of, lot of kind of a, like, like applications where it just doesn't make sense to build custom software. In the industrial settings, we talk about like, like time series databases, obviously one of the good, good, good examples, but, but OPC protocols and, and, and and uh, BI tools and such uh, breeds of, of software. It doesn't make sense to build those from scratch. But when we favor products, we always look at the products which have high uh, quality API, high quality uh, interfaces, so that those selected products can be fitted well in the future digital ecosystem. Uh, then about cloud, uh, it's fairly common still when going and talking with industrial clients many of the clients say that hey we are not there yet we are not uh, willing to move into cloud security security is a little bit uh, of a current concern maybe the connectivity or availability of the cloud is a concern uh, yes there are a lot of reasons for some applications to stay in on-premises environments closer to the factory floor, but still we, are, we say to the clients that it's time also to start preparing the mindset that some of the applications can be easily running cloud, securely running cloud, and so on. But nevertheless, when talking with industrial clients, it's always a hybrid cloud scenario. You always will have at least for the moment, some of the applications that, that needs to run in edge, that have low latency requirements, that, that, that have uh, high availability requirements and so on. Uh, when we start to design applications or, or, or solutions or architectures, we always prefer domain-driven uh, approach or domain-driven design. So basically we are trying to keep uh, the, the clients ecosystem isolated from the technical complexity of underlying products. We prefer modeling the domains, core domains, uh, ubiquitous language, domain entities, and publishing these domain entities via domain APIs. Uh, obviously, when building API-driven architectures, we prefer microservices but also keeping in mind the practical level of the, gra the granularity level of the microservices, just because some of the, uh, especially the factory on-prem environments are a little bit not, not that flexy as cloud deployment environments. Uh, DevOps, it's 
obviously de facto standard in the cloud world, but it's slowly also getting inside the kind of like mentality and, and, and culture of developing uh, applications in industrial setting. This is not given. Uh, for many decades already, most of the applications in the industrial setting have been developed in a such a way that it's very manual configuration, manual deployments, uh, like point and click type of deploy deployment. But more or less, DevOps, automation, CI, CD pipelines are already applied in uh, industrial setting, industrial uh, on-prem applications and hybrid cloud applications as well. Uh, I also have, have referred quite often to uh, one of the strategic planning assumptions by, by Gartner. Uh, Gartner says that by 2024, 50% uh, of the MES solutions, MES stands for Manufacturing Execution System, uh, will also in, include some level of, of industrial IoT platforms synchronized with microservices based manufacturing operations management apps. So basically, this is also what we have been seeing in real life with, with clients, that the clients are already opening up to leveraging these modern IoT-based applications, hybrid cloud applications in their manufacturing environments. So about time series uh, historian uh, databases and digital platforms, uh, for those who have not been involved in industrial settings, I will give a really brief kind of like, uh, how to say, layered high level architecture of industrial uh, digital architecture. So on the, on the bottom layer, we, see, we have these automation equipment devices, sensors or assets. So basically you have robot, robots, sensors, conveyors, uh, whatnot, basically. So these are the hardware equipment or embedded equipment who actually, which actually drive the production processes. Uh, this equipment also have capability of collecting the data, some level of intelligence and so on and so on. Uh, on the next level, we have what we call manufacturing operations management level. This is the level where you typically, typically have your warehouse management systems, quality management systems, uh, manufacturing execution systems or asset performance or, or, or maintenance management type of systems. And then on the topest level, you have the business processes, the level four in ISO 95 standards. So basically this level has uh, ERPs or supply chain planning or, or CRM systems. So those systems that actually drive the business processes. So how the time series databases fit in this equation? So the typical status here is that uh, when companies buy automation equipment production lines, these production lines typically ship with some level of, of SCADA solution. So SCADA solution or SCADA application is a, a supervisory control and data acquisition. So operator rooms where people sit in front of the big screens and re monitor real-time production processes, uh, control those processes, set recipe values and so on. So these systems typically have built-in uh, time series historian databases because these databases are actually really critical in these kind of like applications. The databases are used to capture the data, show it in real time in order for the operator, operators and uh, control engineers to be able to monitor and troubleshoot the processes. Uh, when companies have started to move to uh, type of like centralized MES projects, like manufacturing execution project. So the objective has been to have the consolidated data on the site level, on the factory level. So these systems also typically ship with a historian database or time series database. Uh, typically these databases in, as part of his, uh, MES systems are actually, they are run on the same exact technology that has been used in the in the shop floor, in the, in the operator uh, floor. So these are uh, time series database, historian database, typically from, from major players, industrial players in the world. Uh, yeah, some of them are German, some of them are, are, are US based and so on. Uh, the challenges here typically is that data is in silos. There's multiple layers of firewalls 
subnets, automation subnets that is protected and, and isolated from each other. And then uh, the applications or the so uh, software technologies deployed here are typically from the more traditional end of the scale. Uh, kind of like the applications designed for running the production processes. So these applications have limited built-in tools when we talk about like modern age, AI, ML, uh, like, like API ecosystem type of uh, applications. Uh, the tools are typically, uh, the products are typically fairly, I would say, exotic, proprietary technology, proprietary software, a little bit cumbersome to integrate, and typically doesn't provide very good developer experience either. Uh, so how we see at Nortel is that we help our clients to kind of like overcome this challenge of build, being kind of like locked in, in, in siloed, uh, siloed architecture, siloed data silos and, and, and vendor locks and, 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 and how to say, uh, uh, yeah. In, in lock situation. So we work with the clients and we start with the bottom floor, uh, integrating different kinds of PLCs like programmable logic controllers, distributed control systems, these shop floor hardware, embedded software systems. Uh, there's a lot of different proprietary protocols involved, but there's also a lot of good tools to help in these integrations. And in this slide, you see a couple of those kind of like our preferred selection of tools when we talk about integrating these, these difficult uh, or, or challenging and, and cumbersome proprietary protocols. Uh, we also see that the world is moving a little bit away from the on-premises system, at least in the into the hybrid cloud platform. And here, um, let me see, yeah. Uh, here, basically how we approach is that uh, we see that the next evolution of, of the architecture is such that we deploy uh, data collectors or, or edge gateways, edge proxies inside the factories, which connects, typically we prefer direct connection to the source of the data, but obviously many times we connect to different kind of, of, of SCADA servers, OPC servers, OPC UA servers, and so. And we extract the data and we stream the data into cloud. Uh, in, and we store the data in the cloud time series database. So this is important step in order to start kind of like how to say, unchaining yourself so that the data becomes useful, da data becomes becomes uh, available for all the modern applications, or all the modern tools, or the, all the modern, mo modern analytics uh, packages as well. So we stream all the data into the cloud and uh, store it in shared uh, cloud uh, database, cloud time series database. And from there on, we start to build different kind of manufacturing applications uh, which live in the cloud. Typically, many of the applications are similar that we used to see in the factory floors, uh, but now we are just deploying, building and deploying the applications in cloud environment, and we are able to leverage all the modern uh, development tools and, and capabilities provided by the cloud. Next, I will have a couple of examples. We can discuss a little bit more in details where we have actually implemented this type of approach, moving towards cloud, hybrid cloud, implementing like applications for, for production operators, but deploying in cloud using modern approach. The first use case is actually a really good example of, of time to awesome. So we implemented a, an application for uh, three hydropower plants uh, for data visualization and, and trending and alerting. So the starting point for this case was that the customer had a challenge. Uh, they had, in this case, the customer had three power plants uh, which already have existing uh, automation system collecting some of the data, but the data was sitting in the factory or, or in the power plant. It was not uh, usable outside the power, pl power plant. Uh, 
And as the data was sitting in the power plant, they had very limited tools to actually do anything with the data. So the typical manipulation or reporting of the data was, was an Excel dump and then some Excel, uh, Excel manipulation of the data and then just shipping an attachment via email. So it, it, it was really difficult to compare performance between different power, power plants and, and, and uh, do any kind of like uh, advanced analytics on top of the data. So uh, we said that, hey, Mr. Customer, uh, we are here to help you. We can uh, very quickly and very easily, in a co cost effective way, we can create your data visualization in cloud. You don't have to invest anything on top of your existing hardware, existing systems in the on-prem. On so we created them a real-time visualization and alerting solution in Azure, Microsoft Azure, uh, with a dashboard, with a capability for the operators and engineers to build their own alerts, to attach those, those alerts and send notifications into their Teams application, chat application, and they had the ownership for the data uh, they collected from each of the power plants. Uh, so how it look, looked like. So here we see their existing uh, infrastructure. So like I said, three power plants, uh, some uh, programmable logic controllers, PLCs, SCADA systems. And luckily they already had in place a product called Capware, Cap Server EX, which is, a, is, is an OPC server connecting to these PLCs. Uh, what we did, we installed one Azure IoT Edge uh, gateway in each of the plants, connected it to the OPC servers, streaming the data out from there in real time, consolidated the data in IoT Hub in Azure, and then building what we call a telemetry service. The telemetry service here is, uh, is, a, is a combination of hot storage uh, InfluxDB, used for hot storage, and then cold storage, uh, Azure Blob storage used for cold storage. And obviously some of the, the, the service, services, internal uh, data storages for caching and configuration. And as I said, this was uh, like really, how to say, uh, straightforward project, not very large project in that sense. We wanted to deliver quick time to value. So we implemented directly uh, out of the box tools on top of the data. So the production personnel gets, got Grafana and Teams for notifications and visualizations. Data engineers got access to the cold data store use, using Azure Databricks. And then administrators, we built the lightweight uh, administrator application to manage the configuration of the, of the service. Uh, how it looks like, uh, it's a real time uh, streaming data landing in Influx visualized in Grafana, temperatures, I don't know, uh, uh, temperatures, uh, energy consumption, voltages, whatnot. Uh, this was obviously for uh, out of the box capabilities and features in Grafana, but this was very like welcome features and functionalities for many of the production operators not used to working in this kind of like applications. So capability to drill down to specific time window, capability to select uh, one or multiple tags, uh, data points for closer um, examination or evaluation, uh, capability to build ad hoc views. If they wanted to compare some, some situation, they would, they, they, they were thinking of comparing some of the data, maybe, I don't know, a power consumption across different power plants and so on and so on. So they had easy tool to building these ad hoc dashboards and also uh, wiring them up to send notifications to teams. So it was really a successful project. Like I said, not uh, very large in, 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 in size, but really, uh, beneficial and helpful product and application for, uh, for the production operators and engineers and data engineers in that company. Then I have another use case uh, also, which is a little bit of different, uh, different type. In this case, uh, we, this is actually an ongoing case. We are helping a client to build a full-scale manufacturing digital platform 
uh, using uh, domain-driven design and API architecture, API-driven architecture. Uh, and also here we are using InfluxDB and Microsoft Azure platforms as one of the cornerstones of the solution. So in this case, the challenge was that the client had a very heavily tailored ERP system, which, had, which, which was uh, already built uh, during several, I would say, at least years, maybe even decades. So and the ERP system was heavily also uh, used in the shop floor in the manufacturing operations. So the client wants, wanted to actually uh, build something so that they could kind of like reduce the, the tight coupling of the ERP system in the factory operations. Uh, they had already collected several good ideas and actually they had brainstormed this, uh, this, the future envisioning also for several years. So they already more or less knew where to go, but they lacked a vision and roadmap how, this, uh, how these functions and features should be implemented so that they would be also implemented in a modern way so that the system would be uh, in a good shape also in the 10 and 15 years. Like I said, the, these manufacturing industrial systems typically have a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. So yeah, you shouldn't implement anything that's uh, only meant for a couple of years. Uh, so what we did is that we helped the client to envision and uh, design a roadmap uh, and we propose them that let's build you uh, uh, like more or less a, a culture of building digital platform in hybrid cloud environments. And in this, in this case, the culture means that uh, we are working together with clients, selecting together technologies, uh, building best practices, uh, building, uh, building templates, uh, processes, how they can actually uh, kind of like transform into a culture of digital, digitalization in this very traditional, traditional world. Uh, so uh, the idea of the platform is that it's uh, independent. So the client in the future is able to choose any partner they like, who they can work with, uh, who can actually uh, be invited to building this platform, uh, to be invited to participate in this ecosystem. Uh, the starting point looks more or less the same. In this case, the client has uh, two factories. Uh, they have dozens of different production lines, programmable logic controllers running the PLs, uh, running the production lines, SCADA systems, uh, even some on-premises uh, databases, historian databases, whatnot. Uh, in this case, we chose to connect uh, to the source of the truth. So once again, uh, we deployed uh, a couple of those Cap Server, Capware Cap Server OPC servers to connect the, uh, the PLC protocols. We captured the data to Azure IoT Edge gateways, streaming the data in real time to IoT Hub, and once again implemented uh, the, uh, the telemetry service in Azure. But in this case, it was a little bit different from the previous one. In this case, we actually wanted to build or started to build a few, uh, like full-blown digital platform. So we chose not to expose the, the interfaces from these products directly to the consumers, not exposing the influx uh, interface, not exposing directly the, the blob storage interface or, 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 or so. So we build a telemetry service uh, domain API or API in front of this uh, so that it will provide a kind of like isolation layer or strangler pattern or anti-corruption layer, what, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we implemented the same approach also for the other services. And in this case, basically, the other services means that customer have order service, production batch service, equipment service, label printing service, and, and many more. And these services actually provide uh, the domain language APIs to the consumer applications. There are different consumer applications. Some are being built at the moment. Some are uh, just uh, in the roadmap in the future. So uh, production planning, production execution, track and trace, different type of warehouse operations, forklift operations, and so on. Uh, and how, how, um, how InfluxDB fits, fits in this picture is that it is actually the cornerstone of the telemetry service that we are building or built. Uh, the idea is that uh, we, we, we collect the data in InfluxDB and then build a wrapper API on top of it, 
providing different kind of tag operations. Tag in, the, in our domain stands for a data point or collected data point with timestamp value and quality, basically. Uh, and then the applications, users, other services consume the, the, the data via the API. And this, this, this is a really good approach for us because it also provides us the kind of like control over, for example, we are able to upgrade the products, we are able to join some metadata with the raw data, we are also to, able to leverage the cold store from the blob, uh, blob storage and, and InfluxDB together. Uh, like said, there are different kind of applications. The applications that we are, uh, we are building here are not any different from what you would see in a traditional manufacturing execution system. Uh, but the difference is that those are built in hybrid cloud environment, leveraging the modern cloud-based tools, cloud-based applications. Uh, typically, production dispatching, production uh, operator screens, downtime screens, inventory screens, forklift truck client screens, uh, different kind of trending, trending and analytics tools and so. Good. Um, then a couple of words why we have actually chosen for these cases and for the many, many other cases, why we have chosen InfluxDB to be the kind of like the cornerstone or the, or the, or the, or the engine, or, or engine for the time series data. Uh, first and foremost, we see and we believe and we, we, we feel that the InfluxDB has a really strong community and buy-in from developers. And in our world, we have seen that the developers are in a very important uh, position and, and role. The experience of the developers, the, how to say, the happiness of the developers is, is our one of uh, key objectives. We also see that there's a, a really good support for different kinds of integrations. Like I said, in our world, integrations is one of the key elements in the, all the applications or all, in all the projects. So we have really good, uh, how to say, variety of different kind of integration interfaces, either using telegraph inputs and outputs, either using REST APIs or HTTP APIs or, 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 or different SDKs. We also feel and see that InfluxDB is a, is a is a, how to say, battle-proven product. It's not only it's not used only in the industrial, but it's coming from also many other domains. And there are a lot of good experience, got a lot of good community in the other domains. So we feel comfortable and secure also to implement in InfluxDB in industrial domain. Uh, it's very important that the tool or product has a lot of different deployment options. We are able to deploy InfluxDB in in, in small scale. Uh, on-prem environments for these data collector nodes, buffering nodes, uh, in, in, in VMs, in, in cloud, in containers, whatnot. So we are free to choose the deployment options that we want. And also it has a good scalability, both from the technical point of view and also from the commercial point of view. So we are able to implement the product in a way that we can start small, with small proof of concepts, small MVPs, and be sure that the, the product and, and software scales when the customer, uh, customer business scales. So this has been really good experience for us as well. All right, I think that was more or less everything that I, I squeezed in for, for here for you. And uh, I want to thank you for listening and uh, if you, have any questions or if you want to uh, have a chat uh, don't hesitate please contact me at here at Nortel you can find me in, in LinkedIn uh, there's probably somewhere my contact details attached as well and and yeah have a nice summer and let's stay in touch thank you